if you take like uh, Prince Ari, uh, just having um, <laughs> a little qualms here and there, and the, the world is feeling it because it's Prince Ari. But the other monarchs who are uh, uh, playing ping pong all over, mm -hmm. <laughs> what would have been said in Kenya, pinky panky or something, and uh, nobody seems to notice. So this queen has been a real queen, like the queen of the bees. Mm -hmm. Not the bees, the queen of the ants. Mm -hmm. Real queen, real and tangible. And I just trust that that stability in the family will continue. And you can see the, 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 the monarchy continues to enlarge, continues to expand. And even um, <clears throat> Barak Muluka's sister is now is within the monarchy now. And that is a good news for him and uh, my brother from Nyakach. <laughs> <laughs> Barak. Yes, uh, uh, thank you uh, very much uh, uh, once again. Uh, needless to say, I've not had time to polish up uh, my historical knowledge of uh, the British monarchy, uh, given the suddenness of the passing on. Uh, however, of uh, the hip, I can say that uh, institutions like uh, monarchies, especially European monarchies, have got their own traditions. Mm -hmm that have been passed on through the centuries, uh, literally speaking. They have got um, uh, traditions that talk about comportment, personal courage, uh, interaction with the external world, uh, including things even like uh, coronation, how one ascends to power, uh, what one does, and it's also known, for example, in the history of the um, United Kingdom, that uh, the liberal democracy that uh, we see there today <laughs> is uh, a development of uh, fairly recent years. If we could say something like uh, three or so hundred years is a, a recent thing, but it must be when you consider uh, that um, it's a, it's, a, it's a monarchy that uh, has been there for centuries, mm -hmm. since uh, the, 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 the founding by William the Conqueror. I think it must have been in the 10 hundreds, um, or William the Bastard, as he's also sometimes called, because these con kingdoms were established through conquest. You came with soldiers, with knights, and uh, you occupied space, established a rule and that rule had its own uh, uh, succession traditions about who ascends to the throne and how they behave and comport uh, themselves. And that is uh, what uh, Her Majesty uh, the Queen has uh, managed to be the bearer of for 70 solid years. And now, of course, uh, uh, Prince Charles is uh, de facto the mm -hmm. king, even as uh, we speak, you correctly observed that uh, she came to this country as a, a princess mm -hmm. and left as a, a queen. Mm -hmm. uh, what remains is, of course, uh, going through the motions of uh, coronation. It's going to be the first opportunity for us, actually, for the world um, in generations to be witness to how they go about uh, the coronation of uh, their royal sovereign. Mm -hmm. um, but we, with regard to challenges in families, they are everywhere because uh, in the end we are all human beings and uh, we have got our own challenges, little challenges here and there in families. And so I think that uh, overall it can be said of uh, this family that uh, it has been uh, a good uh, role model. There have been the challenges of uh, people like uh, the late Princess uh, Diana, more recent times, uh, challenges with Prince Harry and his family, but which are no more things. There were challenges of uh, Prince Charles and, and Camilla. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I would say there are no more, no more things. Mm -hmm. There are no more things. Uh, so many people, of course, expect uh, and they hold them in high esteem. 
uh, when you look at the, at, uh, the monarchy, the majesty, you know, just uh, the royals, there's a way and there's a tradition that you need. And most of you can see you in suits. Um, yeah, some of you, yeah. <laughs> Donning a tie. Uh, even, yes, borrowed from, uh, you know, the long sordid history of the tradition as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with the, with, with, the, with the tie pins as well at the end of the day. These are things that we picked from, you know, the Britons, uh, so to speak. But let me just come to you, uh, yes. Dr. Jane. Yes, yes, sir. And, and a bit of the philosophy as well. Yes. Um, a commentary on the Queen is a little bit too much for me. Mm. <laughs> but as head of state of um, England and having no specific specific executive function of guiding the country which is left entirely to the prime minister and parliament and the government being run by a legislative team mm. whereas the queen just gives assent um shall we say the royal assent to government i think the only thing we can really praise her for is the fact that she has sustained the british culture mm -hmm as the symbol of its advancement, the symbol of its, um, as the epitome of the global cultures. As you know, um, many of the monarchs are a symbol of a specific group of people as the rulers, as the most wise, and preside over a large property across the entire globe where they have ruled and gained. As a person, she was born into it, so I cannot blame her for having entered into a system that I entirely do not agree with. But um, for the sake of representing the British culture, the British people, their royalty, um, their pride as a nation, I think uh, the Queen has done a, a reasonable job. Mm. I won't say so much about um, the problems that arose from the divorces, the children, the ones leaving the family and going to Australia. Uh, I would say she also had a fantastic husband, King Philip, mm -hmm. who was also of a very strong character and background. Mm -hmm. His mother was actually a, a nun, if I may put it that way, totally given to the service of mankind. As a family, they have demonstrated a certain sense of dignity in mm -hmm. the royal family. But that is as much as I can say because there's a lot of water under the under bridge. The, mm -hmm. And uh, here we are bemoaning a woman who symbolized dignity of women, who symbolized order, who symbolized a, uh, a love for the people, who was always ready to be present even beyond the ages of 90 where most of us can't walk mm -hmm. or most of us probably will not be able to walk as strong as she did. I think let us hope that God has put us all in, uh, in a happy state. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. And uh, what you can see on the screen as well is uh, you know, the tradition <coughs> of uh, the monarchy that upon her death, that has to be uh, put on the gate, that particular announcement and a statement has to be uh, put on the on the gate of uh, the the palace where she is right now and uh, we shall be looking at some of the uh, poignant points especially when it comes to africa and how we related to you know the monarchy going back to Suez canal where we know there was a lot of controversy uh, with egypt during that particular time as well and what we can pick from that but i just want to hear from uh Churchill suber what, some, uh, what are some of, of the silent, enduring moments that you can remember of Queen Elizabeth? And you being also a student of history, uh, she or the monarchy must have struck you in one way, positively or negatively, uh, during your lifetime. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I think I want to join um, the people of um, citizens of the United Kingdom and of course the Commonwealth as a whole, including ourselves, uh, in mourning the, the, the departed Queen. Um, I've seen uh, the standard in particular say the Queen is dead, but uh, they, they forgot to add that long live the Queen, because mm. um, the culture and tradition mm. that um, the Queen 
um, symbolized um, is bound to remain intact. I think um, because uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was probably very young or not yet born uh, when she became queen, um, some of the, you know, the things we learned in history um, and, and how wide her power went and influence. Um, you know that even as we say that she's the queen of, queen of England, uh, she still remains also the queen of you know, countries like Canada, mm. Australia, the, uh, the Commonwealth. New Zealand. You know, there are many other territories that were and remain within the purview of, of the monarchy in, 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 in the United Kingdom. Um, and, and so that is how rich um, her legacy is. I think that um, quite often whenever women, including even the women in Kenya, the mm. women folk in Kenya celebrate leadership positions, they quite often forget that the queen <laughs> is one of the longest serving mm. uh, leaders uh, in the world. Um, I saw it when, uh, for example, uh, we had the first female uh, president in, 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 in Liberia. Um, we have had, you know, leaders, and, and then there's a lot of celebration, and people quite often forget that, you know, the queen um, has been there and continue to be there. Um, the second point is the influence of her leadership in some of the Commonwealth traditions, including the legal practice, the lawyers in the room, you know, uh, continue to pride themselves in, uh, in, in the practice of, of, of common law. Uh, which is largely a tradition of, 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 of England um, uh, and, and the British uh, legal system. That interestingly, you know, being able to hold this when, you know, um, the United Kingdom of Britain is one of the countries where you cannot really lay your hands on any written constitution. It's all um, an amalgamation of traditions, mm -hmm. but which, you know, the people have been able to uh, respect and uphold. Uh, in fact, it is one of the countries or territories in the world where there is almost near uh, perfect constitutionalism. There are certain traditions of stepping aside, um, which of course is linked to what we'll be discussing um, about, you know, uh, political hygiene. Yes. Um, you saw the recently the the Prime Minister is signing, mm -hmm. uh, yet in our own country, when a former uh, Deputy Governor resigned, uh, he was recently taken to court that he should be disqualified for attempting to run for governorship because he resigned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can see how far apart we are. And, and so I think that um, um, the influence and the traditions that um, uh, the, key, the Queen of England that has rested, um, symbolized, uh, go far and wide beyond um, the immediate territory the where, you know, her authority lay. And, and I think uh, the stability um, that African countries that had the, I do not want to say privilege, because you, being colonized is not a privilege, uh, but it, it's, it's part of our heritage. Mm. Um, uh, enjoy is, is, is part of is part of her, you know, uh, uh, legacies because um, uh, despite the fact that you know uh, there are countries that uh, were not even ruled by Britain, for example, you remember countries like Rwanda have since joined the Commonwealth, and I think there is something attractive about you know the manner in which you know she carried herself. Uh, Barack has talked about you know her comportment. You know, quite mm -hmm. often people expect. Or think that you know ladies are are, are 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 genetically prone to throwing tantrums. Of course, there are certain things that you may have seen that are unpleasant. The conduct of government, but even recently, when uh, you know the prime, the immediate former prime minister was behaving badly, including uh, throwing parties mm -hmm. um, um, at 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 Ten Downing Street, uh, we never heard you know her complain publicly. So there, I think there's a sense in which. She held the family together. It's a very large family. Yesterday I was uh, seeing how imposing, you know, the Mummingham Palace is. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in such a homestead, you know, where everybody else that uh, associates with royalty in terms of 
uh, birth and marriage live, you know, keeping harmony and uh, togetherness in, uh, in such a family can be a very daunting task, which she has been able to do even after the, 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 the departing of, mm. of, of her late husband. And I think that is something that we need to, you know, uh, recognize. Indeed. And we shall be discussing, of course, political culture and how we can try and compare and contrast uh, what is happening with Britain, where we borrowed heavily, including, you know, a system of governance, the bicameral uh, government before we came to with a new constitution that is a hybrid of uh, also the American constitution, so to speak. But uh, our system, our legal um, infrastructure, so to speak, also is borrowed heavily from uh, the Britons. Still, we're talking about some of his wigs that uh, now when we saw uh, the Supreme Court and the judges uh, and also the lawyers wearing some of wigs, wigs, wigs people are saying, how why are we keeping these traditions uh, of the wigs that run way back or hack back to 16th century? But this is what you're waking up to, sad uh, moment for the world where we are profoundly sad for, of course, losing Her Majesty, who has been the long-serving, of course, uh, Queen of uh, England, Queen Elizabeth, Britain's long or the longest reigning monarch and the nation's figure, that is England, and a towering presence on the world stage for seven decades. Uh, she died peacefully at her home in Scot Scotland on Thursday, aged 96. And just quoting Prince Charles, her eldest son, uh, the newly king, he said, quote unquote, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms and the commonwealth and by countless people around the world. The 73 year old said this in a statement News that the Queen's health was deteriorating, I should say, emerged shortly after midday on Thursday when her doctors said she was under medical supervision, prompting her family to rush to Scotland to be by her side. Thousands gathered outside Buckingham Palace, as you can see, in central London, and there, were, there was a stunned silence when the flag was lowered to half-mast. The crowd sat to the gates as the notice announcing the death of the only monarch most Britons have ever known was attached to the Black Iron Gates on the Grand Mall Boulevard leading to the palace. Black London taxis lined up in tribute. Buckingham Palace said King Charles III and his wife Camilla, the Queen Consort, will remain at Balmoral Castle where the Queen died before returning to London today on Friday when he is expected to address the nation. On Elizabeth's death, Charles automatically becomes monarch of the United Kingdom and the head of state of 14 other, uh, 14 other realms, including Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. The Queen had been suffering from what Buckingham Palace had called episodic mobility problems since the end of last year, forcing her to withdraw from nearly all her public engagements and her husband of 73 years, this is Prince Philip, died in 2021. Her last public duty came only on Tuesday, as we've heard from our panelists as well, when she appointed Liz uh, Truss as Prime Minister, the 15th of her reign. And uh, she said this, the death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Uh, she, this is what uh, Truss was saying. Outside her Downing Street office when where the flag, like those at royal palaces and government buildings across Britain, were lowered through thick and thin. Queen Elizabeth II provided us with the stability and the strength that we needed. She was the very spirit of Great Britain, and the spirit will endure. Let's just listen in to how the crowd also were responding and, of course, paying the tribute and the deepest condolences to Her Majesty. Twelfth Canadian Prime Minister, I'm having trouble believing that my last sit down with her was my last. I will so miss those chats. She was 
thoughtful, wise, curious, helpful, funny, and so much more. In a complicated world, her steady grace and resolve brought comfort and strength to us all. Canada is in mourning. She was one of my favorite people in the world, and I will miss her so. Well, that is, uh, of course, uh, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, also paying his tribute there. But let's listen in to, of course, how this transition is so immediate upon her death, where we have King Charles III, who has taken the reins of the monarchy. Prince Charles has spent most of his life waiting. But now, says former royal correspondent Charles Ray, the longest serving heir to the throne in British history has a new and very immediate role. It's very much, the, you know, the, the Queen is dead, God save the King. Simple as that. It's, it's almost a seamless transition and then there will be, uh, then there will be a, 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 he will have it sit on the throne and get the, get the crown at a, at a later date. So uh, it will be seamless in that, in that sense. I mean, from the moment that the Queen passes away, Charles is King. It's, it's that simple. Born in 1948, Charles became heir apparent at the age of three, when the Queen acceded to the throne on the death of her father, George VI. Following an unhappy time at school in a remote area of the Scottish Highlands, he studied at the University of Cambridge. He was made Prince of Wales by the Queen at the age of 20. I, Charles, Prince of Wales, do become your liege man of life and limb. Charles then entered the military before leaving to concentrate on royal duties in 1976. His relationship with his new subjects has been at times turbulent. Following years of speculation about his marriage plans, Charles married 20-year-old Lady Diana Spencer in 1981 with a dazzling wedding ceremony at St. Paul's Cathedral. Two sons and new heirs, William and Harry, later, the marriage ended in 1992. The decision was apparently amicable at first, but emerged as acrimonious by the time of their eventual divorce in 1996. That with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. The union was said to have been a disaster from the start. The tragedy was compounded by Diana's death in a car crash in Paris a year later. Charles was left looking an unlikely sovereign, and royal watchers openly questioned whether he would ever be crowned. Mm -hmm. Author Penny Jr. maintains he is a popular figure. There are always going to be people who don't like him because he has been quite a controversial figure. He, when the Queen came to the throne, I don't think anybody disliked her because nobody really knew her. Charles has been around for over 70 years, and he has... He has been active in those years. He's got involved in, in all sorts of quasi-political areas um, and expressed his views. But anybody that has come across Charles, I would say, or who knows him, will, will love him. Charles's long-term relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles became more public after Diana's death. The couple were married quietly in 2005 after gradually appearing in public together and becoming part of the royal circle. Charles's approval rating also gradually improved, burnished by the popularity of his two sons, who also married. He began undertaking more official senior royal duties after Queen Elizabeth scaled back her workload due to ill health. Professor of the History of Monarchy, Anna Whitelock, says the transition from heir to king will not be radical. It's not going to reflect or represent a fresh face for the monarchy. It's going to be another, you know, aged, elderly monarch ascending to the throne, even though, of course, he's been Prince of Wales for so many years. 
Um, I think, you know, that he does have a potential relevance around the environment, but I don't think he's going to end up feeling, you know, that he's particularly popular and certainly not, you know, on the level of um, his mother, the Queen. Right, so that you can see how the crowd really must at the Buckingham Palace to just pay their tribute yesterday singing Long Live the Queen who passed on yesterday at the age of 96 after a long storied his history at the monarchy as the only monarch actually who has served for the longest uh, during her lifetime and the world continues to mourn profoundly uh, the passing of the cherished sovereign and much loved mother according to the words of her only son that is prince charles who has immediately taken over as king charles the third we take a short break right now when we circle back of course we shall try and see what have we borrowed heavily from the uh, the monarchy especially with the uk and the system of governance here in the country, we're still battling with the presidential and parliamentary system, which way to go. We know also they have the Magna Carta. We have what they call it like a big term of a constitution, all right? Other countries have slimmer, but are we also leaving to the law and the spirit of the constitution itself at the end of the day? How do they do it when people have been, of course, uh, embroiled in corruption and malfeasance, they step aside. We've seen the Prime Minister, uh, the immediate former Prime Minister Boris Johnson doing that with the scandals over Partygate as well and his decorum and protecting other ministers who have been embroiled in some scandals as well.